it's easier to just carry on than to work in Every Friday evening they get together in. to discuss their recoveries. It gives them a chance to get together, but also to share their experiences. And it was... There's still a stigma to overcome, whether it's drugs, alcohol, or a behavioural addiction like gambling. So everyone here asks for anonymity. Nonetheless, the project has had lots of engagement and some real success. People are still very reticent about talking about their um, problems with addiction. There's still um, there's a fear that they, if they mention it, they might get into trouble, they might get thrown out of the university, they might get prosecuted. When you see the outcomes that you get, you see the students that you've managed to keep within their degree, you've helped them not, not just drop out, but to thrive and to, to finish their degree and, and get their qualification. It, it's very likely we've changed the trajectory of the whole course of their life. The university's UK task force is due to report soon on drug addiction on British campuses. It's been closely looking at successes the model here has already had. Phil Mackey, BBC News. Tell us. It's 20 minutes past six. Uh, let's take a look at the papers and we're going to go take you to the back pages for a change to start with. All of them leading with the triumphant Harry Kane as he became England's highest ever goal scorer in last night's Euro qualifier, Euros qualifier against Italy. The Mirror is calling him King Kane. We'll have more on that with Mike shortly. Let's have a look at the Times this morning. Uh, was the average council tax or top £2,000 the bill for the first time? After the Bank of England raised interest rates, it comes as households face many other price rises, of course. The Metro is leading with the bizarre story of a Nigerian politician and his wife who were found guilty of trafficking a man to the UK to harvest a kidney from him. They'd hoped to give the organ to their sick daughter. And in The Guardian, Nicola Sturgeon is pictured leaving her final appearance at First Minister's Questions on the front page of The Guardian. It comes just over a month after the surprise announcement. She was stepping down as leader of the SNP. What's caught your eye? So I've been trying to work out this story about what it, what we actually learn from this story about coffee drinking. It's a story in the Times. So the, the line there you can see says, coffee drinkers are a thousand steps ahead of the rest. So they did an experiment. This is the New England Journal of Medicine. And they had two groups of people, one who were having coffee and one who were not, no coffee at all. And then they looked at how much they walked, how many steps they took, and how much they slept. So part of the uh, study, which was not terribly revealing, was that the people who, who drank a lot of coffee slept a bit less. I think we kind of know. You know, if you have a coffee late at night, you're going to struggle with it. Or they said it's not a given. But the other thing was, why are they walking more? Why is it given that the people who are having the coffee walking a thousand more steps a day ahead of it? <laughs> and in amongst... The quite unscientific uh, evidence that was put forward is one possible counter explanation is that on the coffee days, so the people are having the coffee, they were paid for, by the way, by the research. So the coffees all got paid for. So they say one possible explanation is that on coffee days, people went further to buy from fancy cafes after all the scientists were paying. So the, the scheme itself was kind of encouraging people to go, well, I might as well work, walk farther because I can get a better coffee and I'm not paying you somewhere hit, else. You hit the nail on the head by unscientific. saying that was unscientific. What, very quickly, I just want to give you this. This is, I'm just giving you this. It's a zebra crossing, a zebra crossing. It was um, a zebra which escaped from a zoo in South Korea. There you go. It went run around, didn't it, in, in yeah. town? And, oh. Great picture, great picture. For more than 100 years, kings and queens have been among the few people permitted to walk on one of Britain's greatest medieval treasures, the Cosmati Pavement. And now, for the first time in its history, visitors to Westminster Abbey will be allowed to stand in socks, which is important, in the exact spot where the king will be crowned. Our royal correspondent Sarah Campbell explains. In just six weeks' time, Westminster Abbey will host another coronation. Since 1066, 39 monarchs have been crowned here. And for the past 700 years, beneath their feet has been this, a mosaic made from thousands of pieces of glass, marble and stone, the Cosmati pavement. It's just so unusual that is, this is here. Italian masons came here with all their materials. They collaborated with the English masons to produce this fantastic, glittering, shiny mosaic in front of the high altar at the heart of Westminster Abbey. It would have looked amazing. It's so beautiful in the flesh, but it's been covered up for years. Yes. 
covered with carpet and boarding just because it was in such a deteriorated condition that it couldn't be safely used. And that's why when you look back at archive footage from the late Queen's coronation in 1953, all you can see is the light coloured carpet. The medieval floor, which by then was uneven and damaged, had been covered up since Victorian times. Vanessa and her team spent two years fully restoring the mosaic, with maintenance an ongoing project. It's witnessed so, so much, it's, uh, you know, throughout the centuries, every special event has taken place and probably on the Cosmati pavement. Usually the public is kept well away from the Cosmati pavement in order to protect it, but for a few short weeks after the coronation, they will be allowed for the first time to actually walk on the mosaic, as long as, of course, they take off their shoes. It's the high altar, it's a very sacred space, it's where special services and major services take place um, and for, for normal visiting the area is completely roped off um, but we just think as part of the celebration of coronation uh, we want to allow a few people access to onto the pavement to see what it's really like and to get a real feel and, and a sense for the space. And to, to stand on the place where the coronation chair will have just been. Yeah, you'll be able to stand right in the centre point where the, where the coronation chair sits and faces east. And also you'll be able to see the pavement itself in, in great detail. I mean, it's a masterpiece. It's been there since 1268. It's really lovely. Oh, Anti-monarchy campaigners opted not to remove their shoes when they carried out a brief protest there earlier this week. On May the 6th, the focus will once again be on this seven metre square mosaic, a colourful example of the Abbey's long history and connection with the monarchy. Sarah Campbell, BBC News, Westminster Abbey. Let's see what's still coming up a little later in the program this morning from the Great Plague to World Wars, most recently the COVID pandemic, of course, St. Bartholomew's in London has nursed patients through all of it. We're going to take a look back at the history of the oldest working hospital in the UK as it celebrates 900 years of care. I did not know it had been in that existence for yeah. that long. That's extraordinary. Time to ask you the news, travel and weather where you are. Hello, good morning. Roughly one in every 50 people have suffered from lasting illness after catching COVID, according to the largest study carried out so far into the impact of long COVID in Scotland. Researchers from Edinburgh University found around 91,000 people engaged with the NHS about symptoms of long COVID, including breathlessness and fatigue, as similar to numbers suffering from strokes, but is likely to be a substantial underestimate because it doesn't include people who manage the illness on their own. The early analysis that we've done suggests that women are, are more likely to develop long COVID as well as people who are in late 30s to late 60s age category. Uh, people who have two or more underlying health conditions are also more likely to develop long COVID as well as people who are overweight or obese. The Deputy First Minister John Swinney has revealed that he repeatedly tried to leave the Scottish Government over the last seven years. He told the BBC he offered to make way for others after the last two Holyrood elections, but the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon wouldn't countenance him standing down. He's also disclosed that he came incredibly close to resigning over the controversial system of school exam moderation during the pandemic. It was a really difficult week, believe you me. I came incredibly close to resigning and I remember reading a comment which said, you know, surely, surely the kids of Scotland could have been given a break because everything else has been turned upside down. And I read that comment and I thought, that's your mistake, mate. And, you and there's more of that on Glenn Campbell's podcast. Now, Dunkeld has been named the best place to live in Scotland in an annual guide. The Perthshire town's proximity to nature, its range of local shops and food scene were all highlighted by the Sunday Times Best Places to Live guide. Six other locations in Scotland are featured on the list, including Orkney, East Linton and Shawlands in Glasgow. OK, let's find out what the weather has in store for today and the weekend and Callum's at the map for us. Hello, good morning folks. So an approaching area of low pressure will bring 
A lot of cloudy drift starts today for many with some showers or longer spells of rain. Some clearer breaks in the far north where it is a chillier start to the day. As we push through the course of the day though, the cloud will tend to break. We'll see some brighter sunny spells developing, but also in turn a scattering of heavy showers across some central southern areas perhaps with the odd risk of thunder. Whilst in the north we'll still have our lingering front giving some more frequent showers. Mild wherever you are, a wee bit chillier than Northern Isles where there will be some brighter spells. Tonight then, unsettled with showers or longer spells of rain tracking from west to east across the country, some heavy, and the showers in the north turning wintry as the night progresses across the hills. Rather chilly in the parts of the north, but generally a wee bit milder further south. Into tomorrow then, a cloudy day for many central southern areas with clusters of showers, brighter to the north with sunny spells, and also some showers. That's your up to date on the weather front. And watch out for those showers, particularly in the central belt, there is some surface water lying on many of the roads at the moment. That's all for now, I'm back with the next update at right about 5 to 7. Till then, bye-bye. Hello, you're watching Breakfast with Charlie Spates and Naga Manchetti. Time exactly 6.30. Lots of people will see their mobile phone and broadband bills rise from next week.